After infection with coronavirus, we know that about 85% of people have a short-term infection, relatively mild, and after a week or so, go back to normality or relative normality. We know that 15% go on to become more ill and will require hospitalization. What is it that determines whether you're going to be in that 85% group or the 15% group? Now we know that there are risk factors including obesity, age, smoking and comorbidities. But I'm not going to talk about that for the moment because I think that there's another factor which has been overlooked and which may be more important. And here the time course is important. After infection, there is a period of up to seven or nine days during which there will be a viremia, that is, the virus is detectable in blood in the back of the throat and certain other tissues. And during that phase, you might have a sore throat, headaches, mild fever, a few aches and pains. And the fork in the road at this later period, at seven to nine days, the ones who go downhill move towards a viral pneumonia, which then becomes a mixed viral, bacterial, and finally fungal pneumonia. The time course is important because if the critical events that determine whether you're in the 85 or the 15 group are occurring within such a short time frame, that means that it is the innate immune system that is deciding whether your immune system will get on top of the virus and you'll recover or not. Now the innate immune system is interesting because it's very susceptible to dietary influences. So for example, its cellular components such as neutrophils, macrophages, can only function optimally if you have 1,3,1,6 beta-glucans in the system. The other very important component of the innate immune system is lactoperoxidase, which plays a key role in protecting the nose and throat and the respiratory tract. And that is an enzyme that depends on the presence of iron as a cofactor and cyanogenic groups to produce hypothiocyanus and hypothiocyanite ions. Now we know that the coronavirus is vulnerable to hydrogen peroxide and to hypothiocyanus and hypocyanite ions. Both of these compounds damage the structure of the virus and prevent it from re-entering a cell and, and uh, multiplying. Now the innate immune cells produce hydrogen peroxide and for that you need the 1,3,1,6 glucans The enzyme lactoperoxidase produces the hypothiocyanus and hypothiocyanite ions and for that you need the iron, you need the cyanogens. And we've included all of these in one single nutritional package, which is is Extend. Is Extend a cure for the coronavirus? No, I don't think it is. But what I think it does do is to improve both the cellular components and the enzyme components of the innate immune system and help to push you into the 85% group that will recover, as opposed to the 50% group who will go on to require hospital care. Now, if by using this formulation, we can push you into that 85% group if, by giving this to enough people, we can increase the split from 85-15 to 90-10, we can cut the numbers of people who need hospitalization by a third. That would be an enormous boon. And I'm talking about compounds here that are natural, that derive from the diet, they're extremely safe and very, very suitable for public health management programs. I think this is the way forwards.